Hey all, Dave here again, back again for the third part in the Enlightio 56 Questions for Atheist series. You all know the drill by now, it's a list of questions from Enlightio, and I'm answering them 10 at a time to stop you and me getting bored by them. Just a quick intro for this one, so let's get on with it then. Question 21. What role do logic and reason play in your belief system? I think this is a great question, and it's an interesting one for me. I think logic and reason are important, and I think the world would most certainly be a much greater place if logic and reason took a greater stage in people's belief systems. Or at the very least, it wouldn't be a worse place. I've studied logic, though not to an advanced degree. I have experience with propositional logic and classical logic. I also have experience with the rationality debate, both from a psychology and from a philosophy perspective. So, it's important enough to me that I decided to study it to some extent. I do my best to make sure that I've reasoned my conclusions and that they are formed as logically as possible. There are even some arguments that I've spent time actually formulating and making sure the inferences are correct and the logic is correct and my reasoning is done well, or at least as best as I can. However, I can't say that I do that for everything. Logic and reason aren't important enough to make sure that all of my beliefs are absolutely logical or absolutely reasoned. When adopting new beliefs or looking at new claims, I try to use logic and reason. But I don't think it's possible to do that for all of our beliefs all of the time. And I'm not even sure it's absolutely necessary for all of them. I think there are some beliefs that are just trivial enough that it doesn't matter that much. My important beliefs are where I generally focus when it comes to reason and logic. Question 22. Has atheism ever caused problems in your personal relationships? Not really. I was involved in a relationship with a woman whose parents were quite fundamentalist Christians. She wasn't, but her parents were. They requested that I have a discussion with their pastor and discuss my doubts about God and Jesus with the pastor. But there's never really been any serious problems in my personal relationships because of my atheism. I'm lucky enough to live in a country where most people are atheists. And the average Christian doesn't really care if people are atheists. We have a fundamentalist, sure, but what country doesn't? For the most part, though, most Christians and even Muslims in the UK are happy to coexist with atheists, and vice versa. It might appear differently because the louder voices get the most views, but the average Muslim or Christian in the street doesn't really care that much. Of course, your mileage may vary in other countries and other people may have have different stories to tell. Question 23. Do you think there's anything unique about the human experience that atheists can appreciate and enjoy? Okay, so I'm not really sure how to approach this question if I'm honest. For the most part, I think I know what's being asked. There are certain unique elements about the human experience. The part that I'm not quite getting is why anyone would think that atheists can't enjoy those. We can appreciate beauty, communications, music, art, literature, our relationships with others, love, joy, happiness, and everything else that a believer can. There may be differences in why we appreciate it, but we can appreciate it and enjoy it all the same. There are probably elements of the human experience that believers can enjoy that atheists can't, though I'm hard-pressed to think of any at the moment, just as there are elements of the human experience that atheists can enjoy that believers can't. Question 24. What do you think are the most common misconceptions about atheism? This is a great question. A fantastic one, in fact, as far as I'm concerned. I think one popular misconception is that atheists cannot ground their morality, because atheism has no grounding for morality. As I discussed in a previous video, we ground our morality in much the same way that believers do. A believer may argue here that they have their God to ground morality in, but we have other options. The believer may argue 
argue that they have an objective grounding, but we have similar also. Another common misconception is the idea that atheists just want to sin, or don't want to be held accountable to something bigger. This isn't true either. Most atheists do their best to be good people, and they hold themselves accountable to the law, to their family, to their friends, their community, and much, much more. Most atheists want to be the best people they can be. To some extent, I think the common misconception actually encourages atheists to be even better people, because they want to show that you don't need religion to be good. Another misconception that I think is worth mentioning is that atheism is the same as nihilism, or leads to nihilism. To some extent, I can understand this misconception. Atheism does indeed seem to bottom out at nihilism. After all, if there's no god to instill value and principles in the universe, and into us, we do seem to live in a valueless universe. But there are atheistic religions which show that atheism doesn't necessarily bottom out at nihilism. And ideas like absurdism and existentialism show that nihilism isn't the only option for atheists. In the name of balance, I'd also like to point out some common misconceptions from my fellow atheists, as I think they're important to address. One common misconception from my fellow atheists is that atheism is not the belief that God does not exist, and that it is only a lack of belief in gods. This is false. Atheism comes in many shapes and forms, and the belief God does not exist is one of them. It has been defined that way for a very long time. I've seen many conspiracies level theories pop up surrounding this definition, and for a group of people claiming skepticism and rationality, many have lapped them up without too much thought. One last misconception, again from atheists, is that there are no arguments for atheism. There most certainly are arguments for atheism. Problem of evil, divine hiddenness, arguments from incoherence, and many, many more. People like Hume, Nietzsche, Oppie, Sobel, Mackie, Law, Draper, and many more have all given us very robust arguments for atheism. Pop-level atheism, unfortunately, has all but erased these from the consciousness of the online atheist and skeptic sphere, though, as well as the many atheist and skeptic echo chambers that exist online. Question 25. What do you think the world would be like if more people were atheists? Okay, so I know I'm probably supposed to give some answer about the world being a much better place. Science would flourish, and reason, logic, and rationality would reign over the world. However, I have enough experience with the online atheist and skeptic community to know that probably would not be the case. In all honesty, I think the world would be more or less the same, but just in different ways. Question 26. What role does science play in your belief system? Well, it helps me formulate some of my views and guide some others, for certain. I try to follow the science when and where I can, and I respect scientific findings. I'm not really a fan of scientism, and I don't think science is the only way for us to gain knowledge, even if it is one of the most powerful and useful tools we have for gaining knowledge about the universe we find ourselves in. Question 27. Do you think there's something special or sacred about humanity? I'm not sure I'd say that there's something sacred about humanity. That's a religious thing, and with not being religious, I don't think there's anything sacred. At least not in the sense being spoken of here. But I certainly do think there's something special about humanity. You only have to look at our achievements, our art, our music, our ability to communicate, our ability to reason, and our ability to look after ourselves and others in ways not afforded to other species to see it. We can also see it in our ability to destroy the planet. There are no other species on the planet with the ability to create weapons powerful enough to end all species on the planet, or destroy it in ways we see humanity destroying our one and only home. Question 28. What would have to happen for you to give up your atheist beliefs? This is a great question as well, and it's been asked a lot, and it's one I've thought about a lot. It would basically boil down to either being presented with arguments compelling enough to overcome my doubts, or some kind of undeniable religious experience, or possibly the witnessing of a miracle that I could not deny. I sometimes think that perhaps if my life was at a low point and needed some lifeline to hold on to, that might might also encourage me to become religious. It's something that's hard to actually think about because who knows where I'll be and what I'll be thinking at particular times. 
Question 29. Do you reject all religions or just Christianity? I reject all religions, not just Christianity. I don't find any of them to be particularly convincing, and I find some less convincing than others. Question 30. Do you believe in a higher power or spiritual force? I can see how this might sound like asking an atheist whether they believe in God, because after all that's what God is, a higher power or spiritual force. However, I think there could be something like a higher power or spiritual force without it being God or a God per se. Think of something like the Tao or Karma. And I do know atheists that speak of things like Karma or Fate, and no atheists that believe ghosts exist. So there are atheists out there that believe in pseudo-religious ideas. I'm not one of them. I believe that there are uses for terms like spiritual when it comes to atheists, such as feeling connected to nature and other people, but this is very different to what is normally meant by spiritual force and similar language. Okay, so there we have it. The third part in this series done. I gotta admit, I'm kind of enjoying this one. There's been some interesting questions, a few that have felt like reframing of the same question, but most of them have been pretty fun to answer so far. They also have had a different feel to them than most questions that get asked by theists, even though they are roughly the same questions. It shows that the way they are worded can make a difference, and I guess perception can also make a difference here too also. Often, will come to these lists of questions with the perception that the theist asking them is attempting to catch us out, so to speak. And admittedly, there are many that fit that bill, but I think those that fit that bill taint our perceptions of those that aren't. Anyways, thanks for watching or listening, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to check out the other videos in this series, links to the previous two parts will be in the description, and don't forget to like and subscribe and share if you find any of them interesting. If you don't mind helping me out, please share the video or some of my other videos. And a uh, big thanks to Rev and Fidel for the Patreon ship. Take care all, see you again soon, hopefully, and I hope life treats you well until then. Bye.